Hello, my friends. Let's practice our reading and listening skills with a biography of an important person in American history. A biography is the story of a person's life. And today, we will look at the biography of Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks was born in Tuskegee, Alabama on February 4th, 1913. After her parents' divorce, her mother moved Rosa and her siblings to Pine Level, Alabama, where Rosa's maternal grandparents resided. In this picture, you can see the maternal grandparents of another famous person in American history. Your maternal grandparents are the grandparents on your mother's side. So the mother and father of your mother. Here we see the maternal grandparents of President Obama. But Rosa's maternal grandparents lived in a different city. So Rosa and her siblings, her brothers and sisters, moved to Alabama where her grandparents resided. Both of her grandparents were former slaves, and while growing up on their farm, Rosa was strongly influenced by their advocating of equal rights. Even though slavery was over, most African Americans did not have the same rights as white citizens of the United States. Rosa attended segregated schools throughout her childhood, which meant a long daily walk to the African-American schoolhouse she attended, while the white students in her community rode a bus to a large new building. This word segregated is similar to separated. And especially when we say segregated, we usually mean separated because of race, the color of your skin. Here are some other examples of segregation and racism that people like Rosa would have faced during her life. There were different entrances to restaurants. There were different um, water fountains. There were different swimming pools, depending on if you were black or white. She attended secondary school as well, but had to leave when in the 11th grade to take care of her ailing mother and grandmother. Ailing means that her mother and grandmother were sick, so Rosa left school to take care of them. She did not return to school, opting instead to get a factory job in Montgomery to help support her family. Montgomery is another big city in Alabama. So there were many jobs in places like factories. So Rosa was making things um, and she took this job so that she could help her family. At the age of 19, she married a barber named Raymond Parks. Parks was a member of the NAACP, and he helped Rosa earn her high school diploma. Rosa became active in the civil rights movement along with her husband. The civil rights movement was a group of people who were fighting for equality of black citizens of the United States. They wanted to end segregation and racism, and this organization, the NAACP, was a big part of the civil rights movement. She served as a youth leader for the Montgomery chapter of the NAACP, and she worked as a secretary to E.D. Nixon, 
president of the NAACP through 1957. So as you can see, Rosa became more and more um, part of this movement that was fighting for equality. Now we come to the part of our story where I need to explain a little bit about the bus system in the city of Montgomery. Under Montgomery city code, bus drivers were to segregate black and white passengers on the bus and they were given strict authority to enforce the code. So what this means is that on a bus in the city of Montgomery, all the white passengers would sit near the front and all the black passengers would have to sit near the back. So as you can see in this picture, this is an example of the segregation, a white section on the bus and a black section on the bus. And like it says here, the bus driver had authority or the power to make sure people followed this rule. If the bus became too full, the black passengers in the back half of the bus could be ordered to give up their seats to accommodate white passengers. What this means is that even in the back of the bus, if the bus became full, the black passengers would have to stand up on the bus to give their seats to the white passengers. If they refused, if the black passengers refused, the bus driver had the authority to call the police to enforce removal of the black passenger from the bus. So if a black passenger said, no, I will not stand up and give my seat, the bus driver had the power to call the police and the police would come to take this black passenger off the bus. Here is an example of this. And this is why this is important because on the first day of December, 1955, Rosa Parks left work for the day and she worked as a seamstress in a department store. So a seamstress, what they do is they sew, they mend, they fix clothing. Here you can see a model of the bus that Rosa was on on this day. As she rode the bus home, the bus filled and soon the white half of the bus was full leaving white passengers standing. So even though um, the, the white half was full, now there were white passengers standing up. So of course, this could mean that the bus driver would tell the black passengers to stand up to give their seats to a white passenger. The bus driver stopped the bus and told the first row of black passengers to get up. The other three passengers in Rosa's row did so, but Rosa refused. And this moment made Rosa Parks famous because Rosa Parks said, no, I will not give up my seat. And she stayed seated. And here in this diagram, you can see the situation. Rosa was arrested for her refusal to give up her seat. Following her arrest, the NAACP organized a bus boycott in support of Rosa and racial equality. Maybe you have participated in a boycott before, but a boycott means you will not spend money on something or do something because you feel it is not right. So many, many African-American people in the city of Montgomery started to boycott the bus system. This means they did not use the bus system anymore. And instead, they carpooled. That means they rode together or they walked. They found different ways to get the work, to get to work, and they avoided the bus system. Civil rights leaders like Martin Luther King Jr. came to Montgomery to support the boycott and to lead protests. 
So you can see here are some examples of protests and Martin Luther King participating in these protests. The boycott lasted 381 days and ended after the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that segregation was unconstitutional. In December of 1956, the bus system in Montgomery was integrated. So for 381 days, many African-American people in Montgomery boycotted the bus system. And finally, the U.S. Supreme Court said that segregation was against the Constitution. This is what unconstitutional means. The Constitution is the supreme law of the United States. So nothing can go against the Constitution. And the Supreme Court said that segregation went against the Constitution. So this means that segregation became illegal in the United States. And so the bus system was integrated. That means that now black and white people could sit together. For the rest of her life, Rosa Parks continued to fight for equality. She passed away on October 24th, 2005 in her Detroit apartment. Here you can see Rosa with another U.S. president, Bill Clinton. And um, this moment on the bus was important for many people and it made Rosa Parks famous. And like it says here, she never stopped fighting, but she will always be remembered for this one moment on the bus in 1955. My friends, do you have questions? Do you have comments about this story? Let me know, especially about Rosa or any vocabulary and grammar that you see in this presentation. Practice, 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 and never give up.